favorite kind of IoT project is when the device just works in the background, does its job, you don't need to log into some dashboard to check on it or anything, just out of sight, out of mind, you get a simple push notification to your phone when something important happens. And that's what we've got here, and that's the project we're going to talk about today, which is a simple power outage monitor. And uh, this came in actually as a request, so here in this box is just that. Let me give you a quick demo here. So this box is powered from a USB wall adapter, so if we simulate a power outage within 10 seconds to our phone here, we should get a push notification. There we have it, home AC power lost. Pretty cool, right? And when the power comes back on, we'll plug the USB back in. And again, within 10 seconds, home AC power is on. Just like that, a push notification when the power goes out and when it comes back on. So let's take a look at this box and I'll show you what's going on. Now this box is part of a more sophisticated home security system that I've made videos about in the past. This is part of my entire trig board ultimate home security system where this box acts as a cellular gateway into all of my uh, trig boards. So I've got doors, windows, flood sensors, smoke detectors, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, I even have mouse traps. All of that data funnels through this box here out via 4G LTE cellular here using the particle boron LTE modem. And this is all battery backed with a giant 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So we should get over 24 hours of battery backup with this box here. If the power goes out, we lose internet, you know, we, we lose Wi-Fi, we lose all of that stuff. We still have a way to get the data out. So it's a perfect solution for a power outage monitor. And if you're only interested in power outage monitoring, then you just need the Boron LTE modem. And of course, a battery backup for that. And then the USB wall adapter for the AC power. And the module is pretty cool because we've got the battery input right here and then it has a built-in battery charger with a PMIC and a fuel gauge. So on the module here, we can actually have the code run and figure out if it's powered from USB or battery. And that's the exact project I'm going to show you here. And we're going to send those push notifications out using the pushover service. So that's a one-time fee. And at the time of making this video, we don't even need a cellular data plan to use the particle boron module. So there's no monthly fees at all with this project. Pretty cool. All right, and here we are in the particle store. This is the boron module I'm using. Uh, so it comes with the module, the antenna you need. And because it supports this Adafruit feather footprint, I'd recommend getting your battery from them as well because it is important that you have that uh, correct polarity and the bigger the better on the battery you know so something like this over 2000 milliamp hours would be good or geez even 6600 would be pretty good and for usb power we're over at the boron data sheet here particle recommends for the boron at least 500 milliamps if you're going to use the 2g 3g version you see here two amps at least. So you know most wall adapters are going to work for this kind of thing. And here they even show you uh, the polarity for the battery connector. And if we go over to the docs page here, you'll see for the trig board, uh, because this is all part of my ultimate home security system, this is documented as part of the cellular battery backed system. So if we go to gateway here, you see the particle software power outage monitoring. So this whole tutorial walks you through how to set all of this up every step of the way. Uh, but I'm going to do that right here in this video as if you did not see any of those previous videos using the trig board. And I'm not going to get into setting up your boron for the first time. This is actually a very straightforward process. I'd recommend just going here and following their quick start guide here, which gets you set up with the module, gets it into your account, and loads a simple program here to blink an LED on the module. Once you're at this point, then you're good to go over here on this power outage monitor project. We're going to use a service for the push notifications called Pushover. So you go over here, set up your account, and once you have your account set up, there's two things we need. First is the user key, which you'll see as soon as you log in at the top right. The next thing we need is the API token. So you'll scroll down towards uh, your applications and you'll create an application 
you can, you give it some name, maybe call it power outage monitor, create the application, and then on the next page you will see your API token key. So those two things, copy and paste out into a notepad somewhere and save them because we're going to use those as the uh, in the webhook from the particle software to send the push notifications out. All right, next we're going to create the integration within the particle. Uh, console here. So you go to console.particle.io. You go over to integrations here. You create a new integration and then we're going to create the webhook. So this is what connects particle to pushover to get that push notification out. So we give it some name. We'll call this power outage and the URL needs to go in as this API pushover URL. So I'm going to just copy that. There we go. It's going to be post web form any status enabled of course advanced settings we're going to have custom fields here and then this needs to look exactly like this token user title message sound so let's just do it so let's go through these fields one by one so for the token uh, when you went into your pushover account and you created the new application this is the api token key so copy and paste that right out the user entry here is when you first log in to push over. That's your user key at the top right. Then for title and message, we're going to make that look exactly like this. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, cool. So I'll fill these in later, but for now, that's everything. You can just leave this alone. We're going to create the webhook. Okay, next we're in the web IDE. Uh, build.particle.io, create a new project, call it power outage or whatever you want. You want to click devices over here and star the device that you created in your account. Okay, just like that. And then you want to click this down arrow and click on the latest firmware that you want to run. So I'm using v2.1. Dot o, but when you see this flashing down here, you might see v1 point whatever. But all you have to do is click the down arrow and choose the, the latest firmware that you want to run. And uh, when the next time you flash the board, it'll go through the process of updating the firmware. So I threw this code over in a GitHub gist here. So let's just copy and paste all of this right out of here. We'll throw it right in here. There we go. Now in order to get this to work, what we need to do is go down to the send data function here. And when you see particle.publish, this is the name of the integration, that webhook that you created. And in my case, I called it power outage. That's it. That's all you have to change in order to get this to work. You could flash this and right now and actually see it work. But let me give you just a quick walk through and show you how this kind of works here. So it's very Arduino like you've got the void set up here. And the first thing I do on power up is check to see what the power source is. So we have a good starting point. So you see here the call is system dot power source. And then if power source is equal to power source battery, then you know you're on battery. And I've got some booleans here to set that so you know, you know, to keep track of what power uh, it's running off of. And then if it's on battery, we set these two strings here. Now this is all just legacy stuff that came over from my other project, these strings here. So string one, stir one like you see it there, is the title of the push notification message. So you see home booting and you know, for other properties I've got, you know, gym one, trailer one, whatever you're monitoring, you know. And then string two is the body of the message itself. So no AC power. And if it's not, you know, home is booting up, AC power good. And then we just send the data and it uses those two strings there to put the message together. And because I don't want to risk like sending a million messages out at once, what I do is actually pull this every 10 seconds. So we've got this variable here we're using to keep track of the start time. And then in the loop down here, just loops through and any time we elapse 10 seconds. Here we go check the power to see if anything has changed. And you see here if it's on battery, but if it previously was not on battery, then it was on USB. So there was a change. Stir one there, home, stir two, AC power lost, send the data. Pretty simple, right? Otherwise, check to see if it was on battery, not on USB. So it changed from battery to USB. 
uh, change the booleans around and then here you see AC power is on. And then just for fun, I thought this would be a good idea to add in like, you know, because it is battery backed, what if the unit itself, uh, you know, runs low on battery and turns itself off? You have no idea. So I thought it'd be a good idea here to also send out an alert if the unit itself is uh, running low on batteries. So if the battery voltage here is less than 3.5 volts, you see we use this call here, fuel.getvcell. So we get that battery voltage, and if it is less than 3.5 volts, we're going to send out a low battery alert. So home, low battery, and that's kind of cool. And then just to give it a little bit of hysteresis there, the Boolean that we use to keep track of things is this low battery uh, Boolean. And if it is then greater than 3.7 volts, we then reset it back to false. And that's really all there is to the logic here. Uh, down here is the send data function that you're calling when you want to send out that push notification. So we kind of format things up and I've made videos on this in the past. I don't think I'm going to get into it too much, but basically we're just creating a JSON string to send out to that integration which is then parsed out by the pushover API service so it knows what the title and message is. And we're using, again, particle.publish to that integration par power outage there with the pushover packet that we put together here. And uh, that's it. All right, cool. So last thing we need to do is give it a test. Trig V8 security is the name of the Boron module I've got here on my desk. You see we've got the glowing cyan LED, so we know it's connected. We can verify the code, make sure everything looks good. And then we can click flash. Now, if your uh, firmware down here was at one point, whatever, and uh, you are doing a firmware update, this can take some time. But uh, just for a flashing, you're going to see it go to a flashing green LED on the module. You give it a few seconds, eventually it'll go back to the breathing cyan LED and you know it's it's working. And we'll just keep an eye on my phone here. So as soon as it boots up, there we go. Home booting, no AC power. How cool is that? Okay, now we're going to plug in the USB cable there. So let's see what happens. AC power is on, it works. So there you have it, the ultimate power outage monitoring system. Get the push notification to your phone anywhere in the world. Monitor as many properties as you want. Uh, and if you're interested, you can tie all of this in with the ultimate home security system. I'll have links to everything in the description below uh, where you can have trig boards tying into this and have it, uh, you know, have that boron act as a gateway, do more than just power um, power outage monitoring. Also send to monitors that speak what's going on. So the front door has opened. We could even have it speak, you know, power lost in the house. So you can really kind of go nuts with this whole thing. And uh, if you're new to the whole trig board uh, project, you can check out the docs here. There's a ton of examples, lots of stuff going on. And we're even talking about uh, solar powered systems now. So Lots of fun stuff. Uh, hopefully you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.